Hello everyone, uh, this is a short video showing exposure to the glenoid of the glenoid in the case of a revision shoulder arthroplasty. So this is a 65 year old lady who presented with a periprosthetic fracture. She had a resurfacing hemiarthroplasty about 10 years ago and was doing reasonably okay although she had some pain and discomfort on questioning her. She sustained a fall three weeks before um, presenting to our department and was being managed non-operatively. Unfortunately, she had a further fall uh, and sustained a femoral fracture and she ended up in our hospital. Radiographs show the fracture had uh, displaced and um, uh, decided that the best way for her to progress would be to undertake a revision so that would allow her better mobility. CT scan showed that the um, fracture was below the uh, resurfacing prosthesis with the um, subscapularis and the lesser tuberosity along with the prosthesis. There was some medial glenoid wear, but no significant uh, medialization was seen. A uh, patient is in a beat chair and a standard uh, deltopectral approach was used in this case. Uh, we used the original incision and extended it distally uh, to allow adequate exposure. Surprisingly, um, uh, we found the cephalic vein was intact, which did help to get into the correct plane of the um, delta pectoral approach. The cephalic vein was dissected and isolated and retracted medially, uh, which is my preferred option uh, even in primary cases as there is less traction onto the vein as it's retracted. Uh, once this was uh, done, uh, the rotator interval was uh, attempted to, to be identified. Remember in this revision cases there is no biceps to lead. Uh, you into the um, rotator interval, uh, but with judgment and a small release incision, once you can identify the prosthesis, uh, which allows and facilitates a release uh, further on. And you can see the prosthesis, the shiny part of the prosthesis, through this little opening. Once I have done adequate release, then I use a saw to osteotomize the lesser tuberosity uh, of the um, uh, prosthesis. Now in this situation, because I'm doing reverse and a stem implant, the thickness of the lesser tuberosity isn't critical. But if you end up taking a thick chunk, I would advise that the lesser tuberosity is um, Debulked, otherwise, uh, wrapping it around the stem can be difficult. Once you lift this up, uh, then a release and uh, release from the front of the glenoid as well as from the pectoralis 
will allow to get a decent excursion on the um, subscapularis bone tendon interface. After this, the prosthesis can be easily removed, as you can see here. And you can see the fracture was quite high and going into the uh, head, which would have precluded attempted fixation in this scenario. Uh, once the prosthesis is out, uh, because there's the fracture, it's, it's fairly easy to identify the planes making sure that uh, you release anteriorly now because there is uh, this is a revision situation one needs to be careful going inferiorly as the axillary nerve can be fairly close in the fibrotic and scar tissue place another one or two retractors in the posterior aspect of the glenoid to facilitate full exposure that has been done, the glenoid surface is prepared and although there is some wear of the um, glenoid surface, uh, some loose fragments of the cartilage which is then scraped off using a Hoffman spoon before starting the preparation for the insertion of the glenosphere. The principles are still the same, one must try and put it in the bottom quadrant. making sure that you remove, remove all the um, fibrotic and scar tissue. Uh, this is the insertion guide for the uh, base plates, uh, which has an inbuilt 10 degrees inferior tilt. Insert the guide wire. Followed by reaming to the appropriate level. Just be careful that the bone is likely to be soft and to avoid any over -reaming. At this stage, once I've done the reaming, uh, check and assess whether there are any overhanging bone, be it osteophyte or just uh, enlarged glenoid. Uh, it's a good idea to remove them at this stage before inserting the glenosphere. After a thorough wash and taking enough samples, the base plate is inserted and I'm going for a mini base plate which is a 25mm base plate. Uh, this should give us a good primary hold, uh, followed by insertion of uh, three screws which is my preferred option, the central compression screw and the two locking screws superiorly and inferiorly you may wish to um, add more screws if required but i've generally found that these three screws if they are in a decent quality glenoid tend to work quite well after you put the central screw uh, make sure that it's bottomed out adequately
following the insertion of the second locking screw, I always ensure and check that my central screw has uh, bottomed out, otherwise the glenosphere taper will not engage fully and uh, increases the risk of uh, faceplate and glenosphere dissociation. Following this, I would do a trial of the um, glenosphere uh, to check and make sure that I get the um, adequate orientation, usually inferiorly, uh, to give a better clearance and better tension on the deltoid. Glenosphere trial is engaged. Use a spatula type device to rotate it to the exact orientation where I want it. After this, tightening the screw will show you the exact level where I wish to insert the um, glenosphere, looking at the lines on the back of the trial glenosphere. Just looking at the in, inside of the glenosphere trial and matching up the markings onto the trial glenosphere with the actual prosthesis to make sure that I orientate the uh, glenosphere in the right degree of um, inferior positioning. Then use a holding device and I prefer this as it provides a uh, good hold and I can rotate uh, the glenosphere and it's easy to remove as well. Uh, post of uh, radiographs show satisfactory alignment of the glenosphere and the rest of the prosthesis. Uh, please visit my website and my YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you.